Hi, Dave and Tim here for the latest episode of A Single Malt Review, and we're going once again into a little bit of anonymous territory. Mm. We know the location, we know the details, we don't know who it's actually from, though, perhaps the most key detail of all. Yes, but we'll just have to speculate. It mm. is the Elach Cask Strength, mm. which is a single malt Isla whiskey from blank, much mm. like the Finlagen, which was also a cask strength one. Um, from blank on Isla. Um, I don't know why there's such a predominance of mystery cask strength um, Isla whiskies out there, but there just seems to be. So, um, what this is is a 58% um, sure as hell cask strength um, vatting from a distillery somewhere, somewhere on Isla, mm. and um, do not try to interpret much from the colour because this is surely, surely, surely coloured, um, mm. though not, I think, chill filtered. Mm. Um, not that they have much to worry this clouding up at the full 58%. Yeah, the label says nothing on either front. Yeah. Um, so it's guesses. very, very little except that it is single malt, so mm. that's really all we've got to go on. We'll just have to dive in and have a look. Um, yeah, this is... I think it's probably kind of super coloured because this will be a between a it'll range in six to ten years old yeah. by my reckoning, hmm. um, based on the economics of how much I bought it for the strength and tasting it in the past. Yeah, six to ten, I think, is the ballpark we're dealing with, and there is just no way, no way oh. that a primarily bourbon matured whiskey which this is <laughs> um, would attain that kind of colour so they also have just this sheer strength of it means there's a lot of relatively yeah. very young whiskey yeah. in there it's um it's it's no not trying to get around the fact that mm. it's young but that's all right the, the the age of the whiskey isn't the problem um mm. at all it's the coloring they've gone and put in there to try and cover that up but never mind um not there's nothing nothing wrong with young isla whiskey as mm. we've discovered it can do very very well for itself this glass is at least a foot and a half away from my nose. I'm already getting waves of salty kelp yep. from that peat. It is a uh, it is a hecker Isla whiskey, oh. that's for sure. Yep, especially about strength. This is, mm, that's almost comically intense. Mm. It is. You can only get so, woo, so close <laughs> to it before it really blows up the nose. Um, mm. it, it's a really hot day here, so it is fuming harder than it otherwise mm. would. But it is a pretty stonking, um, pretty stonking yeah. Isla whiskey, and. Just sort of breathing it from a safe safe distance. Because I don't want to put water in immediately. Mm. So it's a and not a extremely harshly salty maritime peat. Mm. It's more of a more of an oily kind of a peat. It's um, quite a dark ish yeah. flavour. But the greasy hemp. The, the yeah, mm. greasy greasy is good. Yeah. Um uh, jute uh, rather, I think, mm. as opposed to hemp in this oh. case. But like ropes, um, basically, like yeah, old ropes. Yeah, yeah. Um, is, mm. is what I'm getting. And just from the nose, I can sort of start cancelling distilleries mm. out, um, just purely scientifically. Um, it can't be Brooklady because it wasn't producing peated whiskey at the time that this oh. was it was produced. That's some good um, uh, sleuthing there. It can't be. Um, mm. Can't be. Oh, what's the new one that escapes me? Kilomen. Kilomen. Can't be Kilomen because, well, one, they, they don't toss their whiskey into weird um, things like this. And uh, also they are too young hmm. for this one um, based on this batch. Which doesn't round it down by a great deal. You can see some over 10-year-old whiskey in here. Yeah. Um, they're... I don't think it's Bunnerhaven. Hmm. Bunnerhaven makes a much softer style of whiskey. Even Bunnerhaven... Um, I forget what they call their heavily peated one now. Mm. It's the one that isn't Torfer, but anyway, never mind. Um, I'm going to have to put water in this before I can get any closer. It really is quite quite combative um, at this strength. I'm going to try some full strength. I'm getting a little... Hmm, there's a hint of uh, fresh tobacco in there, like pipe yeah. tobacco, yeah, which there is some. I get a lot of from Bowmore. But that's just a stretch. That's it. Uh, there is uh, there is some tobacco in there. It's quite a it's mm. a deep flavour. After saying there's um, there's no sherry in there, there, there could be a few sherry mm. barrels um, going in here because there is there's quite a deep dark element to the mm. flavour. Have a wee foray. Oh, that's got some serious heft. There's an oily weight to that. Yeah. That is a much saltier, but that's like oh, it's like 
I'm thinking, imagine if you, if you somehow were to bite a mouthful of tea leaves and tobacco sprinkled with sea salt, that's roughly what that tastes yeah, like. Yeah, like if that, if that mouthful was... If the whole thing was on fire, um, you, you'd have me there. That's the key element you missed mm. out there. That has got, that has got a keen, keen edge on it. Yeah, that's although it's not often you get a whiskey which is this a Scotch whiskey rather, which is this strong but this readily drinkable. That is mm. not a sense obliterating assault like some other cask strength oh, Scotch man, could yeah. be. I don't I'm going know. To go back for a second um, sip to see what happens. I, I don't know if, if I was myself ready to drink it. Um, that's. Mm. That that's gone over my threshold there. There's just too much of a burn um, for me on this on this day um, for this whiskey. It is, yeah. it's not something I could call smooth. Mm. So I'm going I'm going to break and put the put the water. There in are now. some heavily salted caramelized nuts. A few other um, slightly sweet flavors like that emerging too. Underneath just that blanket of peat smog, which sits over the top of it. Yeah, uh, what little things I got there was yeah huge maritime mm. salt, lots of tar, tarry rope. Yeah. Um, Good, uh, good, good layer of grease on that. Oh, okay. Which is not normally a good thing to say about any food stuff. Oh no! Well, when you're dealing with Isla, um, <laughs> yeah. the filthier, filthier the better. Filthier the better. Um, <laughs> in, until you get into, I don't know, real like OD toilet um, <laughs> kind of associations, mm. then they will just love it more and more in Isla. The more the grubbier the whiskey gets, the better it is. A little more water for me. But immediately after adding some water, that is now. Soften the nose. There's now some fresh cigar smoke emerging mm. on there. All right, now now this is more way more manageable. I yeah. didn't put a whole lot in. It's still probably pretty damn close to fifty percent, but mm. suddenly it's it's manageable now. I can kind of take the hazmat suit off yeah. and handle it properly. Um, There's some kelp, some of that tobacco smoke, some buttered grainy toast. Yeah, there is some toast, isn't mm. there? That's like some pretty. Some, if you dial the toaster all the way, all the way up, up and it's, you it's get slightly some, burned, a little bit yeah. of smoke, the kitchen smoke alarm's going off, but you can still just eat the toast because. Mm. Don't know about the butter. This isn't. There still isn't a. Mm. It's a pretty jagged nose for me, rather than anything it's what particularly we, oily, but just a mm. dash of sweetness, uh, a little bit yeah. of a, yeah, a buttery aspect. In that I way. mean, as far as my mm. nose is concerned, that's way better with that bit of water. Yeah. Some toasty seeds, which again would be the toast, toasted bread feel. Oh, but on the tongue, wow, that's transformed. That is yeah, that's really quite significantly sweeter and more approachable. That's now. quite sweet. It's almost got yeah. fruity now. That's so really quite nice. Salted caramel, some um, stewed fruits. Yeah, stewed red fruits. Yeah. That's what I'm getting. Some stewed plum, mm. sort of macerated red fruits, some, some red berries as well. Dates, uh, sort of like dried fruit. Imagine dried fruit served with a rich sugar syrup. Mm. Yeah, that's Bloody, mm. that's really come into its own. Yeah. That's a really quite a diverse tasting whiskey. Mm. And as soon as the water hit it, you can see exactly how unchill filtered it is not, um, or rather chill filtered it is not. That's gone deeply, deeply murky there. So colour that may be, mm. but they've certainly left all the goodness in for us to discover. Yeah. So that's that is commendable. Um, I'm getting a wee bit closer to zoning in mm. the distillery here. I think it is just with that addition of water. It's just too fresh and fruity to be a Beaumont, I think. And hmm. it's not quite fishy and seaweedy. Mm. No, seaweedy more than fishy. It doesn't have that iodine clang to it that hmm. I get from Laphroaig. So I don't think it's Laphroaig. I'm coming, weirdly enough, I'm, I'm zoning in on the same call of two, um, two distilleries that I was for the Finlagen. And that's a toss-up between mm. Kolila and Lagavulin, because mm. um, I don't think it's I don't think it's Ardbeg either. Ardbeg's got a real Ardbeg's pretty. You can kind of see it coming. This has, I think this has too much going on for it to be Ardbeg. Mm. Ardbeg's quite a restrained. You know, it does its kind of lemon citrus, um, blow your face off with peat thing, and that that's kind of it's it's ballpark. This is mm. if anything, a bit too complex and interesting to be Ardbeg. Normal young Ardbeg anyway. No, I think this one, the, the battle here, for my reckoning, is Kolila and Lagavulin. Mm. And the prevalence of the deeper, kind of darker flavours, that suggestion of a little bit of sherry maturation mm. as well, is leaning me towards Lagavulin, mm. which is exactly where I ended up with Finnagen. And 
that's maybe not such a no, that would that would get you worried, like, oh, am I am I just making all this up? And like, because <laughs> I'm always coming back to like a villain, but it makes a bit of sense if you think about <laughs> it this way. Not many of the Isla producers, uh, they're they're all running flat out. No one's got any spare stock. But if someone does, then it's possible they sell to numerous companies. Mm-hmm. And so if Lagavulin does have spare young stock going, mm-hmm. uh, which still seems a little surprising to me, Lagavulin remains a very popular whiskey. Um, and although it doesn't go into blends, to my knowledge, they still they run that distillery hot. You know, 28, 24 hours a day, uh, that distillery is going, um, never never lets up unless they're cleaning or maintaining it. Um, so I wouldn't have thought they'd have lots of stock to spare. But if they can flick some casks to make Finlagen, maybe they can flick some to make the Elok. I don't mm. know. But that is where my that is where my nose and tongue point me towards. Oh. But um, that's really all it's based on. So I would give my chances of that being accurate no more <laughs> than, say... 40% ultimately right. um, this is the sort of confidence I'd give my own call there but if you if you think you know you've tried that and have another have another guess um, or even if you agree with me um, comment up because it would be yeah. interesting to see a consensus because this is quite a popular whiskey there's um, a lot of people mm. have tried this um, it got a mind-bogglingly high score of 97 from Jim Murray I think mm. this year um, which I think that's probably one of the highest scores given out um, it was one of his year. whiskey of the year contenders I believe well I mean yeah Jim Murray scores uh, they're kind of a rating system unto oh. themselves one that starts at 90 and ends at 97 <laughs> but um, yeah, at any rate mm. um very, very popular whiskey and quite mm. available, so it's not one I really have to recommend. Um, I think lots of people will already be on board with this one. Mm. What I can say is that between this and the Finlagen, I think this is actually a bit better. Mm. Um, for something that's pretty much the same price, I think Finlagen's a bit cheaper, but um, I think there's a wee bit more going on here in terms mm. of um, breadth and depth of flavour. Well, I haven't had enough Lagavulin and to be able to, just, to say whether this reminds me of it as such, so... Sadly, I'm lacking on mm. in front. I had a few Koa Edlers in my time, and Koa Edler is my go-to for whiskey, which has a strong, um, well, greasy rope or leather tobacco pouch nuance to it, tending, to, tending towards the, the, you know, the hemp, jute, yeah. twine. The I think, but I think the, the, if you're going Koa Edler, mm. then I think the um, chances of one of us being right manifestly increase yeah. um, I'd, I'd give that an 80% confidence level mm. really um, because yeah, if, if not if not um, mm. Lafroy, Lafroy, Lagavulin um, the names really aren't working out for me today uh, then yeah Kalila would be my mm. next next bet but yeah, it is wildly different from most of the Kalilas I've tried I've tried some rather yeah. young Kalila and some exceptionally old um, independently bottled Kalila and this is worlds apart in its own niche too with just some common overlapping characters it's a good example of how you can tweak the process, just do things a different way from the standard range mm. produced by that distillery and get something wildly different. Yeah. Um, scoring this one, which yeah. was something I almost was about to start banging out the outro and forget completely. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, this is really, really solid. Yeah. Um, it's been, a, I think, a really good year for um, unnamed... No age statement, mm. Isla whiskies. It's been a good year for young Isla whiskies because we had the um, the uh, the peat cask strength, mm-hmm. um, that little medicine bottle type one. That was yeah. excellent. Um, the Finlagen was pretty good um, in addition to being extremely cheap. This one, I think, is really, really, really nice and mostly cheap. It mm. certainly will not set you back anything like a named distillery or, God forbid, an Isla whiskey with a number on the bottle that will really, really ding you these days. Aged Isla whiskey is more and more and more of a commodity. Um, it's just very, very, very hard to find. So my score for this one is going to be pretty good. It's not going to be Jim Murray good, but then again, <laughs> whose is? Um, it's going to be 88. It's really wow. nice. Hmm. What do you think? I'll go even higher and give this a 90. Oh. It, despite being brutally strong, 58% ABV is remarkably high by you know, even cast strength scotch standards but it is approachable at that strength you can add water and get just layers of depth and nuance without making it insipid without watering it right down it keeps on delivering and it's both um, engaging and beguiling we're not sure where it's from we've got some ideas and it's keeping us guessing which is a good thing it's a mystery 
that it's full of flavor and uniqueness and character all its own. And yeah, I've got to recommend it. Mm. No, it's really, really is solid stuff. Um, for fans of Violet Whiskey, uh, mm. this is probably a must-have cabinet fixture, I think, mm -hmm. um, because at 58%, you'll get a lot of bang for your buck yes, as well. you get a lot of drams out of one bottle if you're mm. being sensible about your consumption. Or even if you're not, <laughs> um, you'll get a lot of, um, it will be a hell of a party at any rate. <laughs> yes. uh, this has been the Single Malt Review with the uh, Elec cask strength. Mm. Uh, we will be right back with something a wee bit different very, very shortly. Thank you for watching. Slanger. See you then.